Uh, God has been good to us. Amen. Well, as you are aware, we are still on the building project. Um, and we thank God for what he's doing. Uh, technically, we've only started this two weeks because last week we took a break. Uh, but by the grace of God, uh, so far, uh, we have raised... Uh, Twelve thousand nine hundred and eighteen pounds. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a better praise. Amen. God says He will do it by many or by few. Amen. He will do it by many or by few. So we thank God for what He's doing, uh, but we need to raise the fifty thousand this month. Amen. I said this month. And it's coming. I said it's coming. I mean, if God has done this in two weeks, you can imagine what God will do. God didn't need one month to create the entire heaven and earth. The whole world was done in just like that. So God doesn't need... All we need is a willing heart. We have to be willing to partner with God. And God will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, So for those of you who haven't given yet, I want to encourage you to give. Let's give. Let's all give. Uh, I know I did say we are going to give a thousand, but uh, we are breaking the roof. We are not staying a thousand. Many people have given a thousand pounds each. Many people. Many people. Now, if God is not here, they won't do that. Amen. Even people online are giving in thousands. People online who have not come to this church before, they are giving in the thousands. So let's give. And uh, I'm telling you, once we take hold of that property, God is moving us to another level. I want you to see a future in this church. We're a young church, but see a future here. See God taking us to where no eye have seen. This will be the last time we'll ever raise funds for church building. This will be the last time ever. After this, we'll be buying church buildings like sweets, like water. Say amen. Amen. And God will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I promise you by the word of God, there's no one who commits to this building project (laughs) whom God will not lift up. The blessing of the Lord will will find expression in your life. So I want us to get ready uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, we only have... 12, technically 12 Sundays left before the year ends. And so every Sunday for the remaining year has been themed. And so today is Blessing Sunday. I made a mistake in the first service. Next week Sunday is Elevation Sunday. Next week Sunday is Elevation Sunday. So I want to encourage you, uh, let's not come alone. Invite someone to these services because you'll be blessed. Whatsoever Adam called, that was the name thereof. Amen. Check through scripture. God never gave anybody a physical property or material. He always blesses people with words. And so let's value God's word and we'll be blessed in Jesus' name. All right. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Okay. Turn with me, please, in your Bibles. To the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. From the King James Version. I read. It says. For the earnest expectation of the creature. Waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the earnest expectation of the creature. Waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. 
1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, from the New King James Version, I read the Bible says, that, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, talking about uh, 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 David, in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm starting a new series uh, for this month in the second service that I have titled Manifestations of the Anointing. Manifestations of the Anointing and this is part one. For us in this church, this is our year of manifestation. And it is critical for us to understand that God wants to manifest his glory. God wants to manifest his goodness. God wants to manifest his favor in your life. Because God's desire is for his word to find expression in your life. God's ultimate desire is for the word of God to work in your life. So the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 3 tells us that without the word was nothing made that was made. Without the word. It says all things were made through him. Through him there means through the word. And without him, talking about the word, nothing was made that was made. So that means everything that can be termed madeable is made through the word. Everything that can be made is made through what? The word. John 1 verse 14. The Bible says, and the word became Became flesh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word becoming flesh, that means the word became tangible. The word became a reality. The word was manifested and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the end result of God's word in your life is manifestation. Amen. The end result of the word of God in your life is what? Manifestation. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, And we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith, Hebrews 11 3. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that means the framing of the world came through the word. So no word means not framing anything. I don't know what you are going through. You can frame what you want by the word. Glory be to God. I have never begged to know anyone. All I have seek to know my entire life is the word. Because everything I need is in the word. Not outside of the word. Even God could not produce anything without his word. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created what? The heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What did he create? The heavens and the earth with? With his word. With his word. And the Bible says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God started hovering upon the face of the waters. So that means for anything to be created, the spirit of God must go first. Once the spirit of God goes forth, and you release the word, whatever you desire will be created. 
Verse 3. The Bible says that after there was darkness and void, God said, let there be light. And there was. That means everything you call through the word must become a reality. And so if you are not opening your mouth and releasing the word to create what you want, you are doing injustice to yourself. Many of us, when we get to heaven, we are going to regret and say, oh my God. God will say to you, look at everything you could have had available. Look at what you could have created through the word that I made available for you. That you ignored the usage of the word. So God wants us to experience manifestations this year. Amen. What God is doing in this church this year, we have never seen it. No eye have seen, no ear have heard. We have never seen it like we have seen it. Because God's word cannot be broken. God says it's our year of manifestation. So what we do is we go to the word and bring forth everything in the word and make it manifest in our area of dominion and command. And in the name of Jesus, it's your season for manifestation. I said it's your season for manifestation. And I want you to understand something. I'm talking about what manifestations of the anointing. So in this series, we are going to find out how the anointing brings about tangible manifestations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And so the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13, the Bible says that when the anointing came upon David, the spirit of God, which represents the anointing, guess what did? He moved him forward from that day on. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David. David from that day forward. So when you have an encounter with the anointing, the anointing moves you forward. And somebody is going forward today. I said you are going forward today. Anything that has stagnated, anything that has come to a standstill, by the reason of the anointing, if I be a man of God and I did not call myself, you will experience explosion of the blessing today. Amen. I, I, I need, listen, listen, listen. This month, this service, I know what God told me is going to happen. Through the anointing, God says, I'll make a little a thousand. Amen. Through the anointing, God says, he'll bring you from the back and place you forward. Amen. So come with expectation. Every yoke of stagnation will be broken. Every demonic weapon that has been waged against you spiritually. Every invincible battles that you have fought in your family, in your bloodline. It comes to an end today. I said it comes to an end today. In the name of Jesus. And so quick question we want to ask is what is the anointing? What is the anointing? Number one, the anointing is the bedding removing, yoke destroying power of God. The anointing is the bedding removing and yoke destroying power of God. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. The Bible says that any shall come to pass in that day. Not tomorrow. That day is today. It shall come to pass in that day. It shall come to pass in that day that the burden, that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. So the anointing has the ability, has the power, has the potential to remove anything you call a burden. 
Sickness is a burden. Poverty is a burden. Being in a tight place is a burden. It's a burden. Not only your own house, it's a burden. But you are coming out. I said you are coming out. I said you are coming out. It was that same anointing that brought Joseph out of the prison, out of the tight place. You are coming out today. Amen. You are coming out today. You and your entire household. Number two, the anointing is the power of God that sets the captives free and liberates the oppressed. The anointing sets the captives free and liberates the oppressed. Acts chapter 10 verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. Jesus has come. Amen. I said Jesus has come. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, Christ is not the last name of Jesus. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. And the Bible says, Christ in you. Christ where? In you. The hope of glory. Colossians 1.27. So when the anointing is in you, oh my God, no burden can hold you back. When the anointing is in you, no demonic oppression can function in your life. So from today, you are set free. I said from today, you are set free. Why? Because the anointing is the power of God. It liberates and sets the captives free. Jesus said in John 10, verse 32, or John 8, 32, he said, you will know the truth. That's the anointing. You will know the truth and the truth that you know will make you free. Make you free. So when you have an encounter with the anointing, it makes you free. And this freedom is not only external, but internal. Somebody say, it's my day. I only preach on the anointing once a year. And only after a long 40 days of prayer and fasting. <laughs> I've never preached on the anointing fasting for 10 days before. Once a year, after a long, what? Prayer and fasting. You will be anointed this month. Ha, rasa. You will be anointed this month. Do you know the reason why many Christians are not anointed? Let me show you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 40. Hmm. Deuteronomy 28 verse 40. It says, you shall have olive trees. Where does the anointing oil come from? Olives. But it says, you shall have olive trees throughout all your territory. That's good news, isn't it? Is that not good news? That means you'll be operating in the anointing all around. But listen, it said, but you shall not anoint yourself with oil. That's not supposed to be so. Why should I have the factory that produces the anointing and yet not be anointed? It says, you shall have olive tree throughout all your territories. But you shall not anoint yourself with oil. For your olives shall drop off. Huh? That's not your portion. Many of you are working so hard 
But the money is not there because your olives are dropping off. When it's your season to enjoy, the devil comes way through some way, comes to steal your, your enjoyment. It comes to an end today. But do you know what takes many Christians here? Disobedience. You can't be walking in disobedience and enjoy the fruits of the anointing. Deuteronomy 28, 40. The curse comes when you disobey. Isaiah 1, 19, it says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat what? The good of the land. So if I'm not eating the good of the land, that means there's something wrong somewhere. And I'm walking in obedience and I'm willing and I'm not eating the good of the land. There's something wrong somewhere. Yeah. So I have to go through my pipeline to see where is the block. What is blocking the flow of the good of the land towards me? Eating the good of the land means wherever you find yourself, you must be the head and never the tail. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready for this? I want you to open your heart because this series is not just theoretical. It's going to be experiential. Amen. The anointing is not in theology. Defining words. No, that's not what we are here for. Manifestation is not in uh, one plus one is two. No, I have to eat the good of the land. I have to live in the best house. Yeah. This church needs to have its own building. Yeah. That is what it means to eat what? The good of the land. Amen. I must not be driving a car and when I want to break, I'm breaking from far. Choo, 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 choo. No, that's not good of the land. No. That's not the good of the land. Right. You are driving a car and then it gets to the traffic light and then and then it stops. It always wants to disgrace you at the traffic light. That's why it's in the good of the land. It's in the good of the land. is driving a car when you are coming. It's like electric car. It's like robot. You just go, somebody says, oh, where did this car come from? That's good of the land. You must drive the best car. You must live in the best part of the nation. You must have the best jobs. Why are you not receiving it? You don't want it? I'll close my Bible and go back home. If you don't want it, let me close my Bible and go back. Do you want it? Yeah, behave like people who want it. If you don't want it, I'll pack it. And go because this thing is working for me. I'm not teaching you theory. I have come this far by the reason of the anointing. What well, God has done, last month was exactly 20 years I came to this month, this country. 20 years. 20 years. But what God has done for me in this land is beyond people who I have no people who have been here for 50 years, so they are still, they are still struggling. They are anointing. It removes burden. It sets you free. When the anointing comes upon you, no yoke can survive around you. The anointing makes you fat. The anointing makes you what? It makes you fat. And in the name of Jesus, the anointing will destroy every yoke. The Bible says that David, David was so anointed Guess the people who were gathered unto him. Those who were distressed. Those who were in debt. Those who were discontented. They have three Ds. Three Ds was in the Bible before we saw three D. Hallelujah. I said three D was in the Bible before you saw three D. Or four D. Concentrate here. Don't get distracted. Concentrate on the word. 
I said concentrate on the word. And what happened? Those people who gathered unto him, they were in debt. They were in distress. They were discontented. The Bible said David became captain of them all. But the next thing, those who were in debt, the anointing removed those chain of debts. It removed the spirit of distress. It removed the yoke of discontentment. And the next thing, these people who were in debt, who were nothing, the Bible says that they became mighty men of valor. They put money together to build the house of God. The anointing works. The anointing works. And it will work for you today in the name of Jesus. So get ready. Get ready for a higher dimension of the anointing this month. And the anointing is in realms. We're going to go there hopefully next week. Ezekiel 47. There is a anchor level, knee level, waist level, and swimming level. You have to choose what level you want. Your level determines a breakthrough. Elijah said to Elijah, I want a double portion of your anointing. Elijah said to him, for you to have the double portion, there are four levels of prices you have to pay. Number one, the Bible says that they went through Jericho. No, they went through where? Gilgal. Gilgal is a place of circumcision. That means to have access to the anointing, there has to be some flow of blood. There has to be what? Flow of blood. You have to experience some pain. All those of you who sit there and say, do you know how the anointing oil is produced? By crushing the olives. Oh, I just sit down a cup of tea. Fine, in the name of Jesus. Anoint you. Thank you, amen. You are a joker. You are a joker. Cup of tea anointing? Cup of tea? The devil's chasing you from your family and father's bloodline and mother's bloodline and saying, cup of tea? Hmm. It must go through some crushing. This one is not cup of tea. How desperate are you for the anointing? Even Jesus could not function without the anointing. Even Jesus, God himself, he could not function without the, So how much more do you think that you can just sit down and in a heater, heater room, heater, 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 put the heater on, fire in the name of Jesus, and then you are sleeping. When the service is going on, you say, today, I'm going to stay home and watch. Now you are sleeping. My voice is going through your ears. It's going over your ears. You are sleeping. You say, ah, Pastor, I'm going, oh, what did Pastor just say now? You, you, it's gone. The blessing is gone over your head. Now I can understand if you're in a far country, but you can't be here in Crowley and say, I'm going to stay online and watch. Somebody say, it's my season season. to be anointed anointed. with fresh oil. oil. Say, with fresh oil. oil. We are not going to experience stale oil. It has to be fresh oil. Fresh oil, Lord. Fresh oil. Fresh oil produces fresh exploits. Oh, this month, you will become another man. Amen. You will become another woman. Amen. God will do exploits through you this month. Amen. God has not called me to raise mediocre men and women. God has called me to raise men who will do exploits in this earth. Amen. Very soon, there will be men and women from here who will be running countries. Amen. As presidents, you say, how did that happen? Very soon, you watch, in the next five years, in the next ten years, there will be men and women from this church running countries. 
You see, it seems a shock to you. It's the same way when they told Joseph, tomorrow about this time you're going to become a prime minister. Uh, Joseph was like, I'm in the dungeon of the prison. This cannot happen. But when Elisha said, tomorrow about this time, <laughs> ah, the, 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 the chief economist said, ah, these prophets have come again. This thing has never happened in 100 years. Even if God opens the windows of heaven, it shall not be. But what did Elisha tell him? You will see it, but you will not eat it. Every time you doubt the prophetic word, you only see it, but you will not eat of it. And what happened? God used four lepers to turn around the economy of an entire nation. Four lepers are non-entities, people who don't matter. So when you're going about, ask God to open your eyes. Because he can use someone who is a non-entity to open you into your destiny. And in the name of Jesus, this is your season. Somebody say, this is my season. Somebody say, this is my season. In the name of Jesus. Did you receive it today? Give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Today is Blessing Sunday. Today is Blessing Sunday. The Bible says that whatsoever Adam called them, that was the name thereof. Numbers chapter 24 Numbers chapter 24, verse 20, verse 20. It says, behold, I have received a command to bless. A command to what? Bless. To bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Say amen. amen. Genesis 12, verse 1, verse 2 to 3. It says, I'll make you a great nation you should be saying amen, amen. I'll bless you and make your name great amen. you shall be a blessing amen. I will bless those who bless you amen. and I'll curse those who curse you amen. and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed amen. Deuteronomy 21 verse 1 and 2 it says now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and will overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 it says the blessing of the Lord it maketh one rich and he adds no sorrow Genesis 27 verse 4 talking about Isaac releasing the blessing on Jacob. Isaac said to him, and make me a savory food such as I love and bring it that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I die. There is nothing free in the kingdom. God gives seed to the sower and he gives bread to the eater. So to have access to the blessing, you have to understand the importance of sowing. Verse 25 to 29, the Bible says, And he said, Isaac said to Jacob, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's game, so that my soul may bless you. Today, I am going to bless you with my soul. So he brought it near to him, and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him. Do you know blessing has a smell? Yes, it does. And poverty has a smell. When you see a blessed man, they smell different. When you see a poor man, they smell different. From today, you will smell the smell of blessing. 
The Bible says that and he blessed him. Then he blessed him. Verse 27. And he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. You will smell the blessing from today. Verse 28. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven. That's a blessing. And of the fatness of the earth and plenty of game and wine grain and wine. Verse 29. Let people serve you. Amen. That's part of the blessing. Amen. Let people serve you. Amen. And nations bow down to you. Amen. Say amen. amen. A small one will become a nation. Amen. Let nations bow down to you. Amen. Be master over your brethren. Let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you. And blessed be those who blesses you. Uh, is somebody doing my work for me or they are not working there? Are they sleeping? Please, let's be focused here. First Chronicles 4, 9 to 10. It says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand will be on me that you keep me from evil that I may not cause pain so God granted him what he requested now lift up your hands in your seated position. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your people. Bless your people. Bless the works of their hands. Whatever they touch from today, let it be blessed. Let it be blessed. I release upon them today the commanded blessing. The blessing that makes. The blessing that makes. The blessing that makes. The blessing that makes. The blessing that makes and adds no sorrow. Therefore, Lord, from today, Make them. Make them. Make them great. Make them a blessing. Increase them more and more. Bless the works of their hands. Let their businesses expand. Let nothing stagnate around them. Let the blessing speak on them. Let them smell of the blessing. We decree an open heaven upon this church from today that will be called blessed men and blessed women. I have received a command to bless and nothing can reverse it. Therefore, I call you blessed. I call you blessed. I call you blessed. Every curse is reversed every curse is reversed 
in the name of Jesus I call it done in Jesus name did you receive it today come on let's give Jesus some praise give Jesus some praise hallelujah hallelujah the blessing will find expression in your life now every head bow every eye close every head bowed every eye close if you're here you're not born again if you die now you know you'll not make it to heaven because your life is not right with Jesus he said pastor I'd like to make it right with Jesus I'd like to go to heaven I'd like to pray for you you're not born again you're not a Christian if you die today you know you'll not make it to heaven he said pastor pray for me I want to give my life to Jesus please wherever you are seated lift up your right hand lift up your right hand I'll pray for you I want to give my life to Jesus you want to give your life to Jesus lift up your right hand and I'll pray for you wherever you are seated alright let's say this together say it from the depths of your heart say Lord Jesus I come to you just as I am forgive me of my sins write my name in your book of life may I serve you all the days of my life from today I have decided to follow you no turning back in Jesus name Amen Father I pray for your sons and daughters both in and online that they will be established in your house may nothing approach them from the kingdom in Jesus name Amen and Amen did you receive it today? Let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of our second service. We thank God for what he